Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Zero, and welcome back to the Cat Lady. Previously on the Cat Lady, we kill ourselves. And then we met the Lady of Maggots, and we told her to do it well. Saw it off. Yes, I do enjoy fine art. Thank you for noticing. There's a certain raw beauty to it that modern painters often fail to recreate. I always wanted to be an artist myself, but it'll be a long time before I can call myself that. I often say that patience are my canvas, but my job is more about restoration, obviously. I look at the damaged human minds and bring them back to their former beauty. I'm sorry, I'm probably boring you. No, it's not that. It's just... It's been a difficult couple of days. I'd really like to go home. Of course, and go home you will. As soon as we've done this little assessment, okay, you probably know how it works. I've read in your file you used to be a nurse. Yes, I know very well how it works. You want to check if I'm nuts? Well, I wouldn't use that expression, obviously. But yes, we have to make sure you're safe and figure out how to help you. Also, as a nurse yourself, you know there's always paperwork involved. These forms won't fill themselves. Honestly, Susan, you have nothing to worry about. This is just a formality. I could tell straight away that you are not nuts. Fine. What would you like to know? I will answer all your questions. Then I'll go home, take a long shower, and catch up on sleep. Wonderful. Let's see then. Where do we begin? So I guess he's my target. Good evening. It's good to see you awake at last. You're in the Cedar Lake Hospital. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the doctors. Would you confirm your name for me, please? Susan Ashworth. Hello, Mrs. Ashworth. I'm glad to see you're all right. You're on the ward now. Your condition is stable. I can see your brain function is just fine and there's no permanent damage of any sort. We've checked your internal organs and they're fine too. You're a very lucky lady, Susan. You might experience extreme tiredness and lethargy for a couple of days, but that should soon pass. I would advise plenty of rest now. The nurses on this ward will take it from here. Please let them know if you need anything. Take care, Mrs. Ashworth. Please, don't try to speak. What did you say? Don't worry, Mrs. Ashworth. Your arm is fine. No, no, no. There was nothing wrong with your arm, darling. Now calm down. Would you like me to get you some water? Let me get you a drink. I'll be back in a second. Doctor, you don't understand. I got really hands off with this problem. And then I lost my arm. I'm sorry, Susan. Did I wake you? I have to take your blood pressure. Two seconds and I'm gone. My name is Liz, by the way. I... Hi. I'm sorry. I know this isn't very nice. Believe me, I hate waking people up just for this. But being a nuisance is part of my stupid job, unfortunately. Oof, I hate this place. Tell you what, Susan. Can I call you Susan? So anyway, I shouldn't say it, but you know I'm going to anyway. You are so lucky. It's crazy. You, doing what you've done, and her, walking in, seeing what she saw. That was a chance. One in a million. I'm not making any sense again, am I? I'm tired. 
They're working us to death here, you know. Modern day slavery. One day I'll tell them what I really think. I swear I will. Ah, and here it is. You've got the blood pressure of an 18 year old. Just wanted to say you're lucky, I think. And that I hope you've changed your mind about some things. Got to go, but I'll see you later. You take care, sweetheart, yeah? You sure enjoy talking to people while they're in sleep, huh? I couldn't tell, but it's like her voice changed in the second part compared to when we first met her. Anyway, time to wake up. Oh yeah, that, that'll definitely wake me up. Bad dream? N no Just a dream like any other. Oh, that's fine then. I nearly woke you up, you see. So you tossing and turning as I came in here. You looked like you were having a horrible nightmare. I get nightmares sometimes. I get them, and I can't wake up. Or sometimes I dream that I'm falling. Those are strange dreams. Because I think I like them. I keep falling, but I never fall, if you know what I mean. Never hit the ground. Never. Man, you just ask way too many questions. And you talk a lot. Suppose I don't have much of a choice being trapped up in here. What happened to me? Well, how much do you remember? I... I took some pills. And I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm. And then... Probably shouldn't tell her the crazy part. I woke up here, and I saw you. Can you now tell me who found me, and what happened? Well, your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My... Daughter? Daughter? Yes. Why? Why'd you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? I don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But why would she do that? How should I know? I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied? It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Sorry. How long have I been here? I was told you arrived at the hospital at 7 in the evening. You had a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. They had to resuscitate you. Your heart stopped beating for nearly a minute, but they managed to bring you back. You went to the intensive care unit, where they gave you a dose of antidote and pumped your stomach. As soon as your condition was stable, they brought you on this ward. It's called Dime Ward. I call it Die Ward, because... All the patients who come here want to die. It's a suicide watch unit. That's why it's so strict. Too much, Rather Liz. Careful. Nurses here are trigger happy with the sedatives. Okay, Liz. That's a little too much information right now. I think you're killing the mood. When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. Look, I shouldn't say that. But you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you. And he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. Dr. X. I remember it was some kind of doctor we found was really kooky in the previous game. Tell me more about this Dr. X. His name is Xavier Zellman. 
but everyone just calls him Dr. X. He comes on the ward often, usually late in the afternoon or in the evening. I personally really like him, but you hear all sorts of stories in a place like this, you know. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is he's been very friendly and supportive. Some doctors won't even say hello to you, but Dr. X usually stops and asks how I am. He knows I have some problems. He can see I'm not happy here. He actually offered me some free weekly sessions. I think I might take him up on his offer. What are they saying about him? Oh yeah, they say he's a big flirt. Nurses, cleaners, patients, he doesn't care. As long as they're wearing a skirt. One girl I knew, Linda, I heard they had an affair. Stupid girl. Well, she left, and I never saw her again. Now, why do you think that is? Dr. Murdered. X got her knocked up. They covered it up and quietly got rid of her. Probably paid her some money. Oh, he dumped her body in the back. Work, but it must have been enough to shut her up. I bet you'll be more careful now. But I can't really say a bad word about him, personally. Well, one day. Maybe. Don't laugh, okay? He's got a weird smell. What do you mean? He smells funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad aftershave. Or maybe it's something he eats. Oh. Thanks for the warning. I'll try not to get too close to him. Now that I think about it, there's something else too. I'll tell you this, Susan. He starts talking to you, and you just open up and tell him everything. It's very odd. I don't exactly hide things from people, but he got some really private stuff out of me. Really private. You know what I mean? Things I wouldn't tell my mother about, and we haven't even started those sessions yet. So, be prepared for that. Sure. But it's a bit too late for me to hide how I feel now anyway. I think I made it very clear when I swallowed those pills. So Dr. X is obviously the target. Seems to be very suspicious. Did you see this daughter of mine? No, sorry Susan. Apparently she came in the ambulance with you, but then she remembered something and had to go. I think someone mentioned she went in quite a hurry. Of course she did. She was worried I'd ask her what she was doing in my flat. Um, saving your life? Do I really have to give her a benefit of the doubt just because of that? One would assume so. That girl is a hero. Maybe real heroes always leave before their identity is revealed. Or she was a burglar, attempting to steal from me. Hmm. That's a possibility too. Have you got anything very precious in your flat? My cat. Maybe. Tell me something more about yourself. Me? I'm a nobody. I'm just a hard-working girl. We all have to pay our bills somehow, right? I rent a room not far from here. There are two other girls living in the house. One is an auxiliary nurse, like me. She's always sick. The other one is a stripper. At least I think so. She's never home at night. Maybe she works at night, like you. Yeah, but I don't leave for work wearing red stockings and heels, do I? No, you're right. You're a real nurse. Not some man's fantasy of one. I used to do all that for my boyfriend. You know, dress up as a sexy nurse and all. Well, I did it just once, really. He didn't like it that much. He didn't like me that much either. Broke up with me last Valentine's Day. Of all the days, he chose that one, eh? He never told me why, but I don't care anymore. I'm tired. Let me sleep now. Fine. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? You don't. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. 
Remember what I said. Dreams are just dreams. But when Until they kill you. nightmares, it's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up. Right? We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. Oh, I fun. want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your parents. When you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him? This would be a very awkward conversation if I was someone like Batman. He just assumes I have a childhood and parents. I suppose I can decide this. I could go the Batman route. But maybe we should just kind of lie to him a bit. Yeah. I had a great dad. I have very fond memories of my father. He was always there for me, no matter what I did. He never got angry or upset. I suppose I never really gave him any reasons to be. I was a good child. Not perfect, but then again, no one's perfect. Whatever made me try to kill myself, it definitely has nothing to do with him. Where is he now? He died six years ago. Cancer. Do you miss him? Of course I miss him. How can you even ask me that? It's my job to ask these questions, Susan. Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? I don't know if, if these are like, if I'm deciding her background or if she's just kind of lying to him. But it reminds me of old, um... Before we could, you know, transfer saves between RPGs, like Old Republic 1 and 2, they used to ask you these questions at the start, and like, what this happened, and who are you, and what was the gender, this and that. There was Planescape Torment might have done something like that, too? I think so. I have played that in a while. I can't complain. My mum was great. She brought me up well. Me and her. We were like best friends. Like soulmates. We did everything together. She passed away seven years ago. When Dad first got diagnosed with cancer, it was too much for her. He kept pretending he was fine, but she just couldn't take it. Her heart gave up. She died quickly. My father kept fighting it. Another eight months of illness and intensive chemo finally beat him, though. He thought he was unbeatable, but he wasn't. Okay, I'm beginning to get a better picture. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes. And we will talk about something else. Oh, finally some freedom? I need to get out of this place. I hate hospitals. Besides, I really want to go home and forget all about this. A band. Oops, accidentally skipped that. Oh well. Just looking at this pillow makes me wonder how many people have died with their heads on it. I'm sure it's been washed many times since then, but it still sends a chill down my spine. Come to think about it, I nearly died here myself. Wait, I did die for a moment, did I? There's nothing interesting under the pillow. Except the cool side of the pillow. If you find that interesting. 1008. It's probably broken. Or maybe it just needs new batteries. It's full of latex gloves. Three different sizes. Take a lot of gloves. Ah. 
I've got enough gloves in my pocket. There's no need to take more. There's never... Never a reason to never take more. Oh, I saw something in there real quick I didn't miss. Sink. I'll just leave that running. It's a list of drugs for patients in side room too. I guess that's me then. I'm on a lot of sedatives, it appears. The stuff they're giving me could knock out a horse and give it a headache for a week too. It could also cause hallucinations and paranoia. How bizarre. Why would they want to give me all that? I'm not crazy. I know that for sure. If anyone's crazy here, it's someone who put me on all this medication for no good medical reason. I, I apparently really, really dislike flowers. It's a list of drugs for patients in side room 1 and some notes. According to this, her name is Anne Burton, 35 years of age. She's taking lots of sedatives and... Mm, same thing they're giving me. It seems that on top of it all, she's taking methadone for heroin withdrawal syndrome. At the bottom of the page, there's a note saying she's actually a private patient who's staying here out of her own free will. Lucky lady. I guess it won't be so easy for me to leave the ward. I've got enough gloves in my pocket. There's no need to take more. That's weird. Nothing important here, as far as I see, anyway. Before I go over there, I'm gonna look over here real quick. Hello? I guess I should wait my turn. Alright, only one way to go, then. I bet she thinks those red-rimmed glasses make her look attractive. I know her kind all too well. Completely dedicated to her job, yet totally brainless and close-minded. She just wants a cosplay homestuck. Red-rimmed glasses are in now. I'd like to go home now. Well, so would I. But there are procedures and a system in place. I can't just let you go like that. What? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? Can I make a phone call, please? Oh, yes, of course. But the phone's being used at the moment. Can you please come back in five minutes? Thanks. Is Liz here? And who's Liz? That young nurse who was here last night. Black hair, very chatty. She said her name was Liz. Uh, I'm sorry, a lot of people come through here. I can't remember everyone's name. Can you return to your bed now, please? It's nearly time for your medication. I can't be chasing around after every single patient. Beg your pardon? Look, I'm very busy at the moment. I'll come and talk to you in a minute, all right? I'm very busy. Can't you see I'm busy texting and sending smiley faces to people? It's very important. Can't be interrupted. I feel much better now. Can you please discharge me? I'm glad to hear that. But I can't discharge you until Dr. X sees you. He should be doing his round very soon. Please return to your bed and wait for him, alright? It's a discharge letter for Anne Vernon. Currently a patient in side room one. 
It seems she has admitted herself into the hospital and is allowed to leave whenever she wishes. Please do not touch these. They are all confidential documents. Yeah? Well, maybe you shouldn't leave them out on the desk for everyone to see. If you are looking for something to read, we have some magazines for patients here. Thanks, but I think I'll pass. Curious about the Liz thing. These must be patients' files. They are piled up on the desk. Is Liz not actually a nurse? Is she part of my imagination, or is she Anne Burton? Please do not touch these. They are all confidential doc- I was only going to tidy up. I'm sorry, are you one of the housekeepers? Why did you dress up as a patient? I just can't stand mess, that's all. And there's no need to be sarcastic. Who's being sarcastic? Excuse me, where's the exit? It's just down the corridor, ma'am. Thanks. I'll be on my way then. Can I see the discharge letter first? A discharge letter? What for? Some of our patients are under observation and aren't allowed out of the ward. For their own safety, of course. It sounds like we're prisoners here. It's for the patient's safety, ma'am. If you haven't been discharged by the doctors, I'm afraid I can't let you through. May I ask what your name is? Some of these options, obviously not going to work. I'm tempted to try it. I'm so tempted. My name is Susan Ashworth. Can I go now? If you've not been discharged, I can't let you out, Mrs. Ashworth. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do for you, Mum. You should talk to the doctor first and come back with a letter and some form of identification. Sorry, Mum. Can't let you through. We'll need to see a discharge letter from your doctor first. Right. It seems that a discharge letter is the only ticket out of here. Now who's in there? Hmm? God. Doesn't she look confused? One thing I don't like is the movement of text, as in, you know, going to the next, uh, sentence, is tied to the arrow keys. So if I'm kind of, like, holding on to them before I enter a room like that, I accidentally skip the first, uh, word there. Another suicidal patient. Strange. She looks like someone I know. Hi. Are you alright? Can we talk for a minute? I can't talk. Please, just leave me alone. Oh, I mean you no harm. I'm trapped here, just like you. Trapped? I don't know. It's just so hard to think without it. But you're a stranger. And you're not one of those lovely nurses, either. They look after me so well. I trust the nurses like I trusted my mother. I just want to talk. I need your help. Unless it's mother who sent you. Was it her? Please, tell me it was her. Um, yeah, sure. I'm a good friend of your mother. I miss her so much. I can't remember you very well. But you should know this. If you really are a friend, you will know my mother's name. The name that haunts me. A beautiful name. Yeah, sure I do. Now, let me ask you. What is it? Oh, well... What is my mother's name? Hmm... Uh... <sighs> That's a weird answer right there. I don't know. I could try it. Anne Burton. No, that's my name. You don't know my mother, you little liar. Leave me alone. Please, just leave me alone. Joan. No, leave me. If you really are the name. But I know. 
I don't think this is a proper way of guessing someone's name. We're just kind of going down the list of names you could possibly have here. It's not suspicious at all. Alice. No, leave me alone. It looks like it hasn't been emptied for a while. There are a lot of discarded medication pots in there. Among other gross stuff. I'll take one of these medication pots. Running stuff in the mirror, huh? She must have ruined something on here. I can't look at myself. The mirror is cracked. A large shard of glass is lying on the side. If they find it on me, they'll think I'm a complete psycho. But it might be useful, too. I'll risk it. I should fog up the mirror, and maybe there'll be some writing on there. There it is. Hello? Any assistance? Someone is coming. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? Hmm. I wanted to see how long it takes you to answer the bell. Look, I'm a nurse. I have a lot of paperwork to do. We're doing our best here. It's not my fault that suicidal fruitcakes like you come here and scratch and piss on the bloody walls. Hey. Don't speak to me like that. I'm not suicidal, and I'm not a fruitcake, I'm and I didn't cheesecake. scratch anything, let alone pissing on the walls. Why do I bother? I think it's time we give you some medication. Can you please tell me your name and your date of birth? I'll have your name, so I can make a big fat complaint. There is no need for that attitude! First, you were being disruptive when I'm just trying to do my paperwork. And now you are threatening me! Oh, you should know we are only following the doctor's orders here. Now, forget that silliness and let me have a quick look at your wristband. Miss Ashworth, I strongly suggest you take this, alright? Are you insane? I'm not taking any medication. I'm not ill! Okay, we are prepared for this. Jim, can you come in, please? You must be kidding me. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm going to give you an injection. You'll feel a sharp scratch. Hold it for me, would you? Uh... Now, go back to your room and rest. You'll be able to relax and have a great sleep. Sheila. If only these gloves could have saved me. I think that's the machine that got me here. And so hard to concentrate. It's just fake filled with drugs. Strike the pinata.
Red liquid is gushing out. I'll fill it with this drug. What is it exactly? How did I get it? It's all a bit blurry. I can't really remember much. Let's check out this door real quick. So that's it for part 2 of the cat lady, as it's really obvious something's wrong with this hospital. I mean, the shrink is called Dr. X, and I think if your name titles the Dr. X, you'll probably use the nickname just to switch out of that thing. It reminds me of some name pun jokes of doctors, like where their name spells out Dr. D or Dr. Death or something like that. He reminds me a bit of the doctor character in Downfall, who was supposedly innocent and it was just imagine as kind of being evil. Although in this case, Dr. X is obviously not going to be a good guy. He's going to be the target, and he's going to have some twist to him. He's probably murdering these people or something like that. Quite a bit of talking in this chapter. Uh, it's probably more than Downfall had, but maybe since Downfall was text, it was less noticeable. And the pacing slowed down a bit, but I imagine it's going to really pick up, and it's just getting for the exposition right now. Anyway. So, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for part 3 of The Cat Lady.